Tonight, we'll have three presenters. At 5 p.m. now, at Eastern Time, uh, we will hear from A.M. Dark, who has been developing the open source Afro Hair Library, a feminist anti-racist database for 3D models of black hair textures and styles. At 5.30 p.m., Bomani Oseni McClendon, a member of the small team developing ML5JS, which is a library that aims to, to make machine learning approachable for a broad audience of artists, creative coders, and students. And at 6 p.m., Valencia James, creator of the Volumetric Performance Toolbox, a software system for movement artists of all ethnicities, cultures, and abilities to create immersive performances online. Our first presenter, A.M. Dark, is an artist and game maker designing radical tools for social intervention. Still in the class war, now in the pandemic, he's in the combination class war and pandemic. Assistant Professor of Digital Arts and New Media and Critical Race and Ethnic Studies at UC Santa Cruz, Dark also directs The Other Lab, an inter interdisciplinary intersectional feminist research space for experimental games and new media. She recently launched Yay or Nay, a Kanye West themed game about black culture, and is currently developing the open source Afro Hair Library, a 3D model database for black hairstyles and textures. Dark holds a BA in design and an MFA in media arts, both from UCLA. Her work has been shown internationally and featured in a variety of publications, including Kill Screen, Vice, and NPR. AM Dark. Hi, everyone. Um, please let me know if I, if I have any audio issues. There's like major construction going on uh, right outside my, my window. Um, yes, thank you so much, uh, Golan, for that wonderful introduction. Um, I'm going to uh, get right into it. I only have 20 minutes and I talk a lot. So let me get started with the screen share. Ooh, hold on. Give me one second. Boop, boop, boop. OK. Uh, perfect. So everybody can see that. You can see my notes. It's going to be very uh, transparent uh, talk. Okay, so the open source Afro hair library is what I will be talking about today. My talk does actually have a title and it is Representation Matters on Black Virtuality and Being Included. So um, I wanted to talk specifically about uh, visual representation and inclusivity and really trying to problematize the sort of uh, the way that we conceive of inclusivity as an inherent good. This is not a sort of hashtag representation matters talk. It is a talk that's thinking about, you know, matters around representation and how to do that in a way that is non instrumentalizing and non exploitative. Um, all of my work is about um, power and representation and identity and for most of my practice, I've been focused on sort of what I would say is maximizing agency for marginalized bodies, usually thinking through my own narrative and the own the external and, and internalized barriers I have faced. Uh, to be perfectly honest, uh, most of my work has been maybe too celebrated by white liberals and that always makes me feel like I'm not doing enough and uh, the current tra trajectory of my work has moved away from that sort of like liberal individualiz individualization, that sort of individual freedom to really trying to move beyond representation and move into, you know, collective liberatory practices. And so I think of um, the open source Afro hair library as not just a sort of database of black virtuality, but also thinking through deco decolonizing practices and um, how can I decolonize the design? How can I um, foster uh, new forms of community? And so I'm gonna talk um, pretty thoroughly about that. So first things first, okay, I'm creating a database of black hair styles and textures, but why do I need to do that? How did this project come to be? Like, why is this important? I wanna start by, showing you uh, some of the research that I started collecting in 2019 to give you the, the, the landscape of what black virtuality looks like right now. So I have a folder here um, that's research that I collected from uh, CG Trader and TurboSquid. These are uh, 3D asset marketplaces where you can buy, uh, sometimes they're free to download, but you know, free to download or um, uh, monetize 3D assets that are created. They're submitted by individual creators and then sold on this platform. And so I'm just gonna pick a few from here. So this is from TurboSquid. Here's a depiction of blackness that you find if you were to search for um, Afro hair or black hair. Right? We're seeing these kinds of really gross caricatures of blackness. Um, here's another image. 
immediately this harkens back to the Jim Crow era uh, black caricatures. And I found this really, um, really disconcerting, not only because I was really just looking for uh, depictions of blackness, specifically looking for black hair, uh, but I, it's unnerving to me that these kinds of images that, you know, uh, other forms of media have long locked away in their vaults and considered, you know, problematic and racist are now being reproduced in this sort of uh, cutting edge technology. So um, these are some of the most egregious, but in searching for uh, black hair, I came across uh, images like this, not very detailed hair, not very high quality model. Um, here's a series of three uh, depictions of blackness. This is mixed race Jerry. As a mixed race person, I am deeply offended by this image. Uh, we have, again, this is supposed to be a black person. You can look at the details of the hair. It doesn't look like black hair that I've ever seen. You also see these sort of you know, vaguely tribal depictions similar to this one. You have things like this. Basically, if you're looking for depictions of, of black hair in particular, you end up with these sort of minstrels or mammies. You end up with hyper-sexualized depictions of women. Here, this model is actually, um, these are braids, but then this woman is bound by rope, uh, you know, around the wrist and around the neck. And so all of this I found very problematic. Um, two issues, like outside of the representation uh, that I wanted to talk about was when I was looking for black hair, um, even entering the search term for black hair into these sort of databases became a problem because these systems are not designed to think about blackness in the way that I think about blackness. When I'm looking for black hair, I'm not looking for a sort of color description. I'm looking for something that reads as an ethnic description. Um, and so that was a struggle. Even now, I can pull this up. So some of this has changed because my work has become more public. I've had uh, you know, people from these companies reach out to me and uh, you know, talk about their awareness of my work. But here's, the, here's a query for black hair. Um, you can see we've got horses, we've got this long black wig with, on a hypersexualized body, more animals than black people. This is very new, this has happened within the last year. So not really what I'm looking for. So even in this search term, looking for black hair, I have to sort of figure out what, um, how to make blackness as an ethnic descriptor legible. And so I have to, um, you know, if I search for Afro hair, then you get a little bit closer. You see these kind of hairstyles, but again, they're very limited. There's not much diversity um, adjacent to these sort of like inoffensive, but not high quality models. You also get things like this, going back to the kind of caricaturized, very limited, narrow um, depictions of blackness. And so this is the reason for the open source Afro hair library, not just to sort of control the kind of representation of a black virtuality, but also to um, be able to opt out of these uh, sort of capitalist corporate systems, right? You know, even if I were to say, well, I just want to like create these wonderful models and I want to upload them to these sites, we have another problem, right? We have the problem of, you know, look how much it costs to buy, to purchase Bubba, this um, depiction of black virtuality. It's $160, you're getting a deal. It's like discounted, right? Um, but I take issue with the idea of buying and trading black bodies. It reminds me of something and I don't really want to engage in that system whatsoever. So instead I decided that um, the way to deal with this would be to create my own website, uh, collaborate with black 3D artists, pay them and support them, give them material and community support to be able to craft our own depictions of blackness. And so I've told you, I've sort of given you um, the lay of the land of how things are. Now I wanna show you um, what it looks like when a black artists collaborate and are con in control of our own depictions. So these are the first, um, these are the first uh, images created by a 3D artist named H.D. Harris. Um, this was basically the proof of concept. Uh, I worked with them. I told them what I was looking for. Um, I talked about wanting to uh, create, commission these uh, 3D models that communicated not just representations of blackness, but how do we represent queerness? How do we, 
how do we have a voice and how do we put that voice, a, a, a radical, pro-queer, pro-immigrant, pro-black, really the antithesis of all of the things that I see in these sort of um, capitalist spaces. How do we create all of that um, just in, the, in this visual language of blackness? And so these were the initial uh, concepts. I think they're absolutely stunning. And this really kick-started um, this project. So I'm showing you some representation and I'm gonna go to my notes so that I remember. All right, there's three things I want to touch on. So here I'm in the second part where I'm talking about expanding the Black virtual um, imaginary. So these are some initial images, but I'm going to really focus the final part of my talk around um, this practice of collaborating with Black artists. So after um, getting this sort of proof of concept and applying to some grants and getting some funding, uh, what I did is I developed um, the Open Source Afro Hair Library 3D Artist in Residence Fellowship Program. And this is actually the very first time I'm running it. It's happening right now. We're about halfway through. And I was able to work with um, an international collective of artists. We have folks from Kenya, Nigeria, London, Belgium, Oakland, Atlanta, and Los Angeles. And we're in the process of uh, developing these models to seed the library. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about what this practice looked like, how to, like why I'm doing this fellowship model, um, how to, you know, really, uh, once again, get back to the sort of liberatory practices, get outside of representation. So in the, in the fellowship model, what we're doing is uh, creating a space for black artists to come together outside of a sort of white gaze, you know, outside of these external pressures to be able to have real conversations about expanding black virtuality. Um, the idea of the library is that we don't simply sort of serve users what they're looking for, right? You can imagine that um, a, traditional, a traditional website like this uh, is usually looked at as a utility. Um, users come to the website and they search for exactly what they're looking for. And the entire idea is to serve them that result as quickly as possible. But with the open source Afro hair library, we are making the presumption that um, we don't want to serve the user what they're looking for if what they're looking for is limited. In the worst case by, you know, the systemic racism that we're all entrenched within, or just by the lack of like beautiful sublime representation. Um, as you could see in some of the, the images I, sh I, I showed earlier, um, there isn't really anything um, that I find to be, uh, elevated or challenging. And so that's what we're doing um, through this fellowship. And I want to give you, this is a sneak peek. This is super secret. No one has seen this. I got some permission from the artist to show some of their works in progress. Um, so this is what we're coming up with together when we're um, outside of sort of external pressures. So these are some sketches for hair ideas. Every artist uh, has their own artist statement. They develop their own theme. They develop a series of models um, to work with their own character bust here. Um, this person, Cicada, is uh, working with uh, mythical creatures and creating really lovely images. Um, there's some more of those. I'm just going to show you a sampling here. Uh, this is H.G. Harris, who is also doing the fellowship, who created the original images. Um, uh, I believe that their inspiration for Blackness is thinking about hair as technology. And so they're in the middle of developing this series, which are just incredibly stunning images. Uh, this is an artist, Malika. These are some of their uh, initial sketches. And so they're in the process of now modeling these out. And as you can see, um, we're never looking at the reason why every so every artist has to create this character bust and they design this uh, series of hairstyles. In the open source Afro hair library, we never sort of disembody, we never just take the hairstyles and like leave them floating. Everything is always uh, presented fully colorized and um, with the character model because we're not looking to sort of create these piecemeal versions of blackness. We're always looking at the human, even in a, in a sort of fictional context, we're looking to create these depictions of blackness that are, that are whole. Um, this artist is Timid Clover. This is um, an initial sketch. Here are some of the images that she's in the middle of creating. This artist is Javon, and here are some of Javon's um, 
3D models. So these are the sort of expansions of, of black virtuality that we're looking for and that we're working with in the library. So I wanted to show you this, but then I also wanted to um, sort of show you the design work. Like how are we going through the process of trying to decolonize um, the, the narrative experience of navigating this website? Um, oh, one second. I've lost my little research presentation. Oh, here we go. Okay. So as uh, Golan introduced, I do have a design degree. And so there has been a lot of background work in addition to working with artists and sort of going back and forth with this art direction and collaborating with them. I'm working with a web developer, Esteban Carlos Benson, and we have spent months really thinking about the design system of the website itself. Not only you know eliminating a search feature, but really trying to figure out how do we immerse um, an audience into this space so that it doesn't become just a, a resource where you come and you sort of extract blackness and leave like black culture behind or you you know extract these black models but leave the the black creators behind and so um, one of the things that we're prioritizing as you can see from uh, a mock-up of our our of our artist page is that everywhere where you see a model, you also see the artist equally highlighted. Um, I'm drawing a lot from the fashion industry here in terms of the way that I'm thinking about this design series. Here is just as important as if not more so than the, than the object that they create, right? The name matters when a new series is launched, you know, you wanna hear what the inspiration and the backstory is from that designer because you respect them as an artist. And I find it, you know, funny that in, um, in these uh, technological and software spaces, 3D artists are actually treated much more like garment workers in the sense that the people who are actually creating these, you know, beautiful objects that are used in all, in all of these applications, um, their labor is invisibilized. They're not seen. You know, what you see is the sort of director or producer of, of a game or a large experience, but you're not seeing, you know, the artist who crafted this vision. And so it's really important that, you know, in creating the library, my relationship with the artist is not just you know, what can you produce for this project or this vision I have, but how are we working together? How are we platforming and amplifying your vision? How are we basically creating um, uh, the space and support for you to, you know, create depictions of blackness that maybe in a different context, you wouldn't be, uh, have the financial means to do so or have the time to do so. And so again, um, elevating the artist and never sort of extracting their work and leaving them behind. Also the fact that, uh, that the, I wanna talk a little bit about like why the, why the hair library is open source and the sort of limitations of that. Um, you know, I said that I wanted to work outside of a capitalist model and I didn't want to engage in the buying and selling of black bodies. And so I thought an open source project would be excellent for that, where I could pay black artists to create these models and then they would be available, you know, widely for any kind of use, you know, for both, um, you know, my, my ideal sort of target audience is actually a young black femme uh, who doesn't even know if they want to make games or if they want to get into software. Maybe they're not even looking for 3D models. Maybe they're just searching for ways to style all of their, you know, wild hair and they stumble upon this, you know, website and they're just, you know, taken aback by these amazing depictions and that they know upon entering the space that it was designed specifically for them. Like this is my goal um, with the library. And so, you know, making it open so, so that it is available and it's accessible um, is really important to me. On the other hand, I feel that, you know, while I wanna avoid a proprietary relationship to blackness, I'm not trying to own blackness. I do feel a kind of protectiveness. And so we're having to think about um, the construction of this library in ways where, you know, how do we make it non-neutral? How do we, you know, keep, how do we make this open without, um, 
you know, making it open for exploitation. And so there's a, a, a few different ways that we're trying to do that. So one is through, again, the navigation. I'm showing you this mock-up here because I want you to see that this is not a site where you just see 3D models in the sort of grid, gridded list. Uh, you'll see 3D models sort of um, interspersed on the page along with articles around the historic politicization of black hair. Um, you'll see, you know, I, I want this to be um, really a, a site of cultural production and reproduction where, you know, you, you can just as easily stumble on a playlist full of emerging black artists and other um, kinds of uh, black cultural media. And so it's not just here's um, here's a model. It's really in, in less of a utility and more of an invitation to invest in the black community. Uh, let's see, how am I doing on time? So, you know, one of the things that I'm thinking about when I develop this kind of work, and I do wanna leave time for questions, so I'll stop in a couple of minutes so we have uh, 10 minutes, but um, it's really important to me to get out of the sort of, normative um, false neutrality that I see in so many tech spaces, right? Like everything, um, in the, especially in these large marketplaces, everything seems to be sanitized. There's no voice. It's meant to be neutral, apolitical. Um, and that's not, that's not something that I'm interested in OSAL. I'm interested in creating a technology and tools and spaces that make a statement, that have a polemical voice. And so every aspect of this, um, residency as this social practice work is how I think of it, um, I have to sort of push back against uh, doing things that are default or really just, just following established practices. And so one example of that is uh, recently we did the open call and I am very invested in making uh, submissions quick and easy for artists and respecting their time. So here's an example of the, uh, here's the open call that went out. This was posted on um, afrohairlibrary.org. And as you can see, you've got some typical things, name, address, pronouns, portfolio, all of the things that you would expect, you know, what skills a person has. Um, but then making this statement very uh, clear up front that the open source Afro hair library exists for the explicit purpose of depicting blackness in anti-racist, intersectional feminist, anti-capitalist ways um, and asking why people are interested in contributing to the project, um, asking if, uh, potential collaborators have Afro textured, coily or kinky hair? Do you have the kind of hair that we're looking to depict? And uh, if, if so, or if not, do you understand, do you have an intimate understanding of the shape, movement and body of this kind of hair? And my favorite question, which has functioned as a really excellent screener, and again, you know, um, reaffirming that idea that we are non-neutral, that we have a voice is uh, my favorite question. Would you, under any circumstances, put raisins in the potato salad? Now, I will say um, this is somewhat limited to a Black American experience, but as I found out through the 60 or so applications we received, there is a di diasporic connection, just an intuitive understanding that no, hell no, raisins do not belong in potato salad. So it was um, really a fun opportunity to see how people would, would respond to that question. And it really was an effective, <laughs> effective screening. Um, oh, I love to end with this um, quote from Ruha Benjamin. Um, her book, Race After Technology, has been uh, such an important uh, work that's informing my, my practices here. Um, one of the things that she says is that Black people already live in the future. And I think that 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 statement is really um, driving all of the work that I do and all of the ways that I'm thinking about the library. Um, yeah, usually I talk way too much and I answer every question. So I'm gonna hold back <laughs> to allow people to actually ask those questions. Uh, yeah, that's my presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, AM. Um, and uh, so we do have some time for questions, which is fantastic. And I, have, I see a few questions in uh, the YouTube chat, so I'm going to pull from there. Uh, one person asks, I think it's a fairly simple question, um, curious if in the early searching for examples in 3D marketplaces, more from the community terms, like say natural hair, turned up less sketchy results than more open or familiar terms. Oh, you know what? I don't remember. I'm going to like, I'm literally going to search this right now because I'm so curious. Let's see what happens if I type in natural hair. 
Ooh, okay. I'm going to share screen again so that y'all can see. So natural hair is like worse. <laughs> this is actually closer to what, what um, black hair initially uh, return. This is really funny. Um, so yeah, when I initially searched for black hair, when I was writing grants, like there would just be pages and pages of like cows and like animals. Um, yeah. So for, to answer that question though, about from the community terms, no, it, it, it doesn't work. And so I actually, the initial title of, uh, the open source Afro hair library was the open source natural hair library, but I changed it because, you know, maybe 10 years ago, natural hair was an inter-community term, but then it became, you know, as, as it does kind of appropriated. And it's like anybody with curly hair, regardless of their historical struggle with said hair is natural. And there also became a kind of fetishizing of natural hair. Like if you look at Instagram, natural hair was still kind of hair like mine that was looser textured or, or really sealed and coily and shiny. And, and natural hair wasn't you know, like type four hair, kinky coily hair was not being celebrated as natural, you know, as part of that beauty standard. And so I actually make, made an intentional choice to change from natural to use the term Afro in part because I felt like the historical power of Afro, right? Like not just representing a diaspora, but also the Afro as a, as a political symbol um, uh, would offer a kind of uh, historicist, historic, I can never say that word and, and longevity. Yeah, thank you. Another question that maybe this leads into, uh, someone asks, uh, I'm interested in the conversations around balancing, creating daily hairstyles versus couture or more imaginative hairstyles. Um, yeah, so this, again, this is the first um, iteration of the fellowship and we have, uh, we have seven full fellows. This is also a sort of like counter practice that I did. Um, there were many uh, fellows who I felt didn't quite fit what I needed for the fellowship, which was to seat the library with these 3D models. They may not have been 3D artists or, or maybe weren't totally aligned, but we did this low residency fellowship where I gave 10% of the stipend and there were no deliverables required. So it was really like a gesture and investment of bringing more people into the community outside of just being able to produce these kinds of models. And so that has really enriched the conversation where we do have some folks who are doing this really high sculptural work. But then, you know, um, uh, two artists, actually uh, Timid Clover, uh, if I can bring those up, let me see just so that you have the reference on screen. So this series in particular, um, Timid Clover's inspiration was the sort of, they wanted to do uh, all uh, locked hairstyles, but going from every day to Regal and this sort of like movement back and forth. And so I really have appreciated um, uh, Nikki's input here and in saying like, we're not just gonna do high couture, it's going to be sort of like, relatable, but also flexible and dynamic. Um, and that'll come out in there. This is also why we have artist statements because I think that insight into, you know, what the creator is thinking about and what inspires them is, is really powerful. And that's how we, you know, again, not, we don't dictate, you know, the terms of blackness, but we, we invite and we get to open up those conversations. And of course there will be another, there'll be ongoing uh, fellowships. And I'm always thinking about the sort of total spread, making sure that we are covering um, many different bases. And we need to close there. I want to thank you so much for sharing your open source Afro hair library with us all here, uh, both in our residency and now with everyone online. Um, there are some more questions we didn't have time to address. If you look in the YouTube chat, some questions about um, extracting blackness and how that relates to licensing, which I think are really super interesting. We're going to shut down. You and I will turn off our cameras and we're going to come back in just about a minute and a half with Bomani McClendon. Thank you.